they were here. Mm. See, this letter. The, uh, this, this is a letter dated 12 February 2015. It is signed by Minister for, for, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Hananyaku. I'm sure you've seen it. If you don't mind, I'll read it. It's important. It says, please find attached a copy of a diplomatic note, number so and so and so, dated 5th February 2015, by which the United States Embassy informs about a proposal to use Ghana as a base for a proposed military operation for the protection of U.S. citizens and facilities in the region, in the sub-region. The note recalls that government agreed to the use of Ghana's territory and airspace for the operations at a meeting between His Excellency President Mahama and Deputy Assistant Secretary of State Ms. Bisa Williams on 4th September 2014 at the Flagstaff House. According to the note, the operations will involve the deployment of approximately 200 U.S. Marine Forces Africa's personnel, four M M MV-22 Australia, and two C-130 Hercules aircraft. The deployment was scheduled to begin on 10 February 2015 and last approximately five weeks if approved. Accordingly, the following is being sought. Clearance for U.S. aircraft to conduct overflights within Ghana's airspace for the duration of the mission. Permission for the six U.S. aircraft to operate from and be staged on the Air Force ramp and for the deploying forces, for the deploying forces to leave and operate out of the U.S. Expeditionary Reception Facility located at the Air Force Base at the Bema Camp. They had what you call U.S. Expeditionary Reception Facility located on the Air Force Base at Bema Camp. Indeed, the truth is that it's the same thing there, that in on Annex A. They had always had access to it. It is not U.S. ghosts that are there. It's their personnel. Okay? So, our friends, my, my view is that, look, I'm not worried about those who don't belong to the NDC or have never been in government before and the masses out there who have been agitated into a certain frenzy. I'm not worried about them. They will take time to educate, inform, and redirect. But I'm worried about those who were in government, who these things didn't go to parliament, they didn't keep them also on fire, they didn't even put them in their handing over notes. Mm -hmm. See, this is how big the Ministry of Information, uh, Foreign Affairs handing over notice. I've gone through it. I can't find a hint of the 2015 agreement there. No, but Koku, is it not is it not instructive that some of these things, and because the matter has become a matter of public discussion, and even the revelations we are making, including uh, the 2012 one that you referred to, is it 2012 or 20, uh, 2015? Yes, yeah, 2015 you referred to, yeah. and we mentioned the people who signed them, and the fact that were, the, the U.S. was to be stationed here and do some activity against Boko Haram and all of that. I am I'm so sad. these things... I am so sad. I have to be honest. Is it good? Is it healthy for the security Not of this country? Not at all. And it's a disincentive for other countries to enter into future agreements with us. Until okay. we are talkatives. We talk too much. Okro maps all over the place. I am very sad doing what I'm doing. So, so, so is it not to be expected that you may not find some of these things in the document that you are talking about, the handing over? That these are... Bits, no, you know, no, no, no. Confidential matters. Have, no, it should have been there. See... It should have been the Minister of Defense handing over. It should have been in national security. Some national security, they hardly do handing over. They do it sometimes mm. in a different way. But it should be here. The only thing I saw here that I've seen close to the correspondence, and you see, at Supreme Court, there will be a lot of correspondence that will come to bear. If you are checking on a law, okay. how, no, please, let me finish, mm. on how a law was made, for instance, if, you, if you, this constitution, you know you go back to the Consultative Assembly, and examine a lot of their memos and proceedings. There are a lot of things happening. Let me just finish up. I realize you are pushing me. Mm. Uh, you know, this point about Article, is it Article 9, which uh, Fuseni read? Mm. It says, United States may conclude contracts for acquisition of goods and services, including construction in Ghana in accordance with United States laws and regulations. United States forces may acquire goods and services in Ghana from any source. And he says that is duality of something. Yes. I'm surprised at that. And this should, they argued, Ghana government, U.S. government, the negotiators, they all sat and argued. Mm. This is a, a letter, and again, you see, 
you caution me by what choice do I have a choice? This is February 27, 2018. It's a letter from the U.S. Uh, ambassador to Dominic Nitiwo. This area became a bone of contention. This is the U.S. stand. Apparently, government eventually agreed. It says, concerning Article 9, Department of Defense contracting officers must follow U.S. law in their soliciting, awarding, and administering contracts. This is a global system, and we cannot make an exception. Ghana government was apparently asking, do it in the procurement law here, which doesn't make sense. However, this does not mean that we are not respectful of Ghanaian law and regulations. We are. Why is the Defense, Department of Defense contracting officers must follow the U.S. law, which is what this clause addresses? United States forces may conclude contracts, blah, blah, blah. The Department of Defense practice is to incorporate the higher of local or U.S. requirements into the contracts. Contractors are bound by the terms of the contracts. Okay. All the, uh, mm. Article 15, mm. they are all here. Okay? All this will be available to those who are challenging the constitutionality or otherwise of uh, the agreement. Okay, Koku, uh, thank you.